Right now, I'm testing an Asus 10 gigabit PCI Express card on the Compute Module 4. It provides a fittingly festive feast of fresh color for the Christmas season. But since other people are finally getting their own Compute Module 4 and I.O. board shipments, I thought I'd share a few of the tips and tricks I've learned to make using PCI Express devices with the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 easier. First, here it is, the cute little 1X PCI Express Gen 2 slot on the I.O. board. It may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. But since it's a 1x slot, it doesn't give a whole lot of bandwidth. You're not going to be running AAA games on the Pi while it's copying files over your network at 10 gigs. PCI Express 1x slots provide a maximum of 5 gigabits of bandwidth. And on the Compute Module 4, in all my real-world testing, I only see 3.2 to 3.4 gigabits of throughput total. Keep that in mind if you have dreams of building a dual 2.5 gig router or a 10 gig NAS. Even if all the hardware works together, which it can, and I'll cover how in future videos, you're limited to a total of a little over 3 gigabits of data on the bus. Now, the first problem you'll run into with a lot of PCI Express cards is they just won't plug in. If a card's connector is 4x, 8x, or 16x wide, it won't plug into the Pi's 1x slot. But don't fret, there are three ways to solve that issue. The easiest way, though it's a little clumsy, is to use a 1x to 16x adapter like this one. Assuming the card doesn't have extra power requirements, you just plug it into the slot on the adapter and plug the adapter into the I.O. board like this. Similarly, you could use a powered 16x riser, sometimes called a crypto mining riser, which is similar, but it requires a special PCIe to USB 3.0 adapter cable as well as an external power supply or a PSU connection. These can be really finicky and you have to put a lot of trust in random unnamed manufacturers for these cards. I accidentally burned up my first 2.5 gig network card in this particular riser. The hardest way, but the most elegant for compactness, is to grab a razor saw and go to town on one edge of the PCI Express connector on the I.O. board itself. I'm hesitant to recommend this though for two reasons. First, it's easy to accidentally cut a trace or some other circuit on the I.O. board when you do this. And second, 1X cards don't quite fit as sturdily in the slot when you have part of the plastic removed. But it is doable. I cut my early prototype I.O. board slot and only scuffed up the nearby capacitor a little bit. If you do this, make sure to use a good razor saw like the Exacto one I have here. I have links in the description to everything I'm mentioning in this video, including links to support my work on Patreon or GitHub. It sure helps me out. Once you have the slot cut open, you can insert larger cards like GPUs without a problem. Hardware is only one part of the equation though. Sometimes you might plug in a card and find nothing at all when you run LSPCI. That's most often a power issue, so for a card that doesn't show up at all, I usually have to install it in one of my powered risers. Other times you can see the card with LSPCI, but if you go into dmessage, you see in the PCI section of the logs that there are messages about not being able to allocate bar space. Bar is the base address register, and the Linux kernel uses that memory space to map PCI Express card functionality into the system's memory. Some cards, like GPUs, need to have more bar space available than the default. In those cases, I have a separate guide linked from my Raspberry Pi PCI Express database website that shows you how to expand the bar space beyond the default 256 megabyte allocation. You can set 1, 2, or even 8 gigabytes, though the latter may require some custom firmware for now. Speaking of the OS, Raspberry Pi OS itself, and in fact most of the OSs you'll find pre-baked for the Pi, like Ubuntu for Raspberry Pi, don't include a lot of drivers out of the box. A lot of times you'll find yourself needing to install drivers from the card manufacturer's website. But as I've found time and time again, manufactured driver packages don't tend to compile well on ARM processors like the Pi has, so you'll likely need to get comfortable recompiling the Linux kernel to build driver modules like I do. I have a full cross-compile environment and a guide for how to set it up, and that's also linked from the Pi PCI Express database website. I think I've recompiled the kernel on average 30 times a week for the past month now, so it's really good to have a fast process for it. Once you get through driver issues and find a couple cards you want to use together, like a 2.5 gig network card and a SATA controller for hard drives, you'll run into the next issue. There's only one PCI Express slot on the I.O. board. But don't fret. There are fancy things called PCI Express switches, and they let you plug multiple devices into one slot. They're not magic though, and some switches don't seem to work well with the Pi. 
I'm testing two switches right now, and if you want to see how well they work, go to the switches linked GitHub issues and follow along there. And so now, to finish up the video, I'll give a quick run through of the cards I'm testing. For many of them, I have a video or two on the channel describing the experience getting the card working and tested, but I don't usually do a video until I can prove one way or another that the card works. The one exception is graphics cards. Ugh, those GPUs. I've put in way too many hours, and I honestly don't know if I'll be able to get one to work with the Pi yet. I've been reworking my Pi PCI device website recently. I'm trying to make it so that you can get to whatever card you want to look at and find a picture, find relevant information, find a link to buy the card, and find a link to the GitHub issue where I'm exploring how the card works and whether or not I can get it running on the Pi. For example, the first section here, the graphics cards, each graphics card has a link to its own page where I'll put more information as I get it, but it also links out to the GitHub issue, and in the GitHub issue I have tons of details about how the card works, uh, its LSPCI output, dmessage logs, everything and anything that I can figure out about the card I'm going to be putting in these GitHub issues, and then I'm going to summarize it on this page. So at the top here I have the GPUs. The first GPU that I tested on the Pi was this Zotac GeForce GT710, and I tested that mostly because the slot on it is a 1x slot, and it should work out of the box with the Pi. It's a pretty low-powered GPU, but I found out as I kept testing it that first of all, the proprietary drivers, the 32-bit ones, never even compiled, and the 64-bit ones would compile but wouldn't run and would make the Pi kind of lock up. So I kind of gave up on that board. I also tried the Nuvo drivers with the Zotac, but I found that they also didn't seem to work and, and caused it to lock up. So then I switched to the Vision Tech Radeon 5450, which was a similar generation of card, but this one had a 16x slot, so I had to use my adapter, the 16x to 1x adapter with it. I couldn't get that one working either, and I tried the Radeon driver for it uh, that's built into the kernel, but that wasn't working so well, and I gave up on it because after a while I, I heard from some people that this older generation of, of chips might not work that well with the Pi. So I switched gears and I tried a newer generation of AMD Radeon and also a newer generation of the um, GTX 750 from NVIDIA. And I've gotten close, but I'm so, so far still from actually getting it to, to work and have any output on it. There, there's a bunch of different drivers that we can try with these cards and I'm still trying, and I've spent way too many hours on all this stuff. We'll see where things go. Follow the, follow the link to GitHub issues if you want to see the latest on that. And someday, one way or the other, I'm going to make a video talking about GPUs on the Raspberry Pi, and maybe it's just not a thing for this generation. Next up is USB cards. I ha I've tested three so far, and um, two of these cards have the same VL805 chip. This card and this card have the VL805 chip. It's the same exact chip that's used in the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, so it's supported by the kernel. I was having some weird issues with this A Adwitz one. It's more of a generic one that costs a little bit less, um, and it's also a kind of a weird form factor, and it requires an external power uh, adapter so that you can plug in a 4-pin Molex connector here to power the, the card. I ended up sticking with this SIBA SD PEX 2199, and uh, it, it was a little bit more compact, it didn't require external power to power these two USB ports. I'm, I believe that if you want to power things using power delivery, you actually need to connect a SATA connector to this card uh, to give power delivery through this USB Type-C port. But everything worked out of the box on it, and it was a little bit easier to get things plugged into it. I'm still going to do a little bit more testing because I believe this Inatech card is, is a pretty good option as well. And it also offers headers for more internal USB ports in, in case you wanted to build a case for a Raspberry Pi. So those are the USB cards, uh, not much to report there. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different adapters that you can use to plug NVMe drives and M2 devices into the Pi itself. I actually have another adapter that I don't have listed yet, but I'll be adding that to the database soon. Uh, an adapter that goes from type, uh, is it type E or type A or type uh, B? I don't remember. One thing I really hate about all these standards is that they, a lot of times computer manufacturers are like, hey, I'm going to take this M2 thing and I'll add a new type on it. And now people have to remember if it's type A, B, E, or A plus B, or B plus E, or whatever. It's so confusing because you, like, you might just have a need, I just want to put an SSD into my computer. And there's SSDs with SATA, there's SSDs with M2, there's long SSDs and short SSDs, all the different keys. It's, it's kind of annoying. And then you have uh, mini PCIe Express, 
you have uh, the, the little uh, Wi-Fi cards might use a different standard. And in some ways, they're all compatible. In other ways, they're not. So one of the goals that I'm, I have is to try to figure out what things work through which adapters and try to make that mapping and try to make a video at some point soon in the new year where I'm going to go over how to figure out which devices need which adapters. Because almost every device that you'd find in like a desktop PC or laptop that you'd want to put into a Pi, uh, because these adapters aren't that expensive, usually, usually they're nine or 10 bucks. Next up, we have the network cards. And I've tested a number of these, and I have actually a few more that I have not put onto the database yet, including a dual 2.5 gigabit network adapter. This first adapter is the Asus PCE AC51. I tried this one to get faster Wi-Fi on the Pi but I was having a lot of trouble getting the drivers to work. Most of the people that use the chipset that's in this card are using a USB adapter, and the USB adapter driver doesn't have the same settings as the PCI Express card adapter. So um, this one, I might still be able to get working. I've just had a lot of trouble with it. As I said at the start of the video, this is the card that I'm currently working with, and I'm currently doing a lot of testing and, and learning around 10 gigabit networking. I know that Linus Tech Tips, in addition to talking about how they're shooting everything in 12K footage and all this insanity, now they have a 100 gigabit network. I'm trying to get into the future and just use 10 gigabits. I, I don't think most people in their homes will even have 10 gigabits for a while. A lot of businesses don't even have 10 gigabits, for crying out loud. Anyways, this is not 100 gigabits, this is 10 gigabits. Uh, but there's a lot of little peculiarities that you start running into when you go from 1 or even 2.5 gigabits to 10 gigabits. And I'll be talking about that in a future video and talking about a lot of the other considerations that you have when you start upgrading to faster speeds on the network. I did a whole video on the EDUP PCIe card that has the AX200. I also tested this Intel i340 T4. I, I actually have another version of this, the i350, that I'm going to test at some point. Uh, this is a four-interface four port uh, gigabit network adapter. So you can have four interfaces through PCI and your built-in interfaces. So five total interfaces. Uh, something like this could be useful if you're building something like a Raspberry Pi router or switch. And I was able to get in total with all five ports, 4.15 gigabits of speed. Another adapter that I'm gonna be trying out is the Mellanox Connect X2 SFP Plus adapter. This is another 10 gigabit ad adapter. I'm guessing that I'll be able to get this to work because Mellanox cards typically have pretty good Linux driver support, but we'll see what happens. And then I just released a video on the 2.5 gigabit network card and how I accidentally burned through another version of that one. Uh, next up, we have SATA cards and storage cards. And I have a couple on here that I don't have up in the database and I don't even have on the GitHub repository yet. So stay tuned for what else is coming in this space. Um, I did test out uh, this IOCrest 4-port adapter, and it worked great, although it got super hot. I, I believe the, the bottom corner down here where this power circuitry is, this little induction coil, got to be 100 and something, 110 degrees Celsius or something like that. Uh, there's also the ASM 1061 chipset on this adapter that I'm going to be testing out. Uh, this one has two internal ports, or you can switch to use external eSATA. And then there's the uh, the the SAS RAID controller card that I, I tried to get working. I might be able to get this working in IT mode, but the problem is with this particular uh, really old card, this was a PCI Express 1.0 card, and it was never designed to work in newer versions of PCI Express. So I'm finding I might not ever be able to get that working on the Pi, but that's okay. I also have this little uh, two port RAID controller and somebody just sent me an Ad Adaptec uh, RAID controller that I'm, that I'm gonna be testing out soon. Next up, I have PCIe switches and adapters. Um, I've used some of these in a lot of videos like this 1X to 16X cable I use all the time because anything that's more than a 1X card needs to use an adapter like this. And there's also um, these different powered risers that I've talked about. This is the one that uh, infamously burned my 2.5 gig card. And it might or might not be this, this adapter's fault. It might also be the card's power. Who knows what it was. The key is that I probably will be a little bit more cautious using this in the future. Uh, there's also switches, which I mentioned earlier. This is the IO Crest one that I bought. It's a two port switch, but uh, I'm gonna be digging into it a little bit more. I have gotten this to work with more than one device, but it's been a little flaky to the point where I, I don't trust that when I plug it in, it's always gonna work. So I'm still trying to figure that out uh, if it might be a power issue or, or what. Uh, you can see that this this uh, particular card uses a four-pin floppy connector for power, 
So it, it could just be that the PSU I was testing it with was flaky. I don't know yet. I, as I said, I don't want to do a video on it until I know all the details that I can know. The other one is this little card. This is a funny one because I bought this on eBay. A lot of these devices, uh, you, you get the best price for them on eBay, or some of them you can't find anywhere but eBay because they don't make these things anymore. Uh, this was made for a video recording system. I think it's like a surveillance system for, for businesses, things like that. It was pulled out of a server. And I don't believe that this card was ever really sold on the market. It was more sold as a component that was part of these video servers. So. I'm gonna see if I can get this Texas Instruments chip that's inside of it uh, to be recognized and work. Anyways, that's all the cards that I have and uh, I'm gonna be testing a lot more. So please visit this site. Uh, please consider sponsoring my work uh, on GitHub or on Patreon so that I can keep paying for the little parts and things that I need to, to fix or replace some of these cards or to get them working uh, and the time that's involved in uh, making these videos and everything else. In the end though, why wouldn't you just buy a cheap desktop PC with multiple PCI slots and an Intel or AMD processor and not have to worry about power, driver, and capacity issues so much? Well, where's the fun in that? Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. But it is... <clears throat> I think I was raised in Texas, but I wasn't. OS, Raspberry Pi OS. Mm -hmm. That's also linked from the... Somebody's walking above me now. The short time allotted to me to record this has been expired. I also tried the, the Novu, Nuvo, no, oh my gosh. Nuvo, nu, Novu. All right, here we go.